Okay, we're going to take a look at another way to solve quadratic equations. Now, we looked at solving by graphing. And that gives us a nice visual of where our parabola is crossing the x-axis. But it doesn't always allow us to get exact answers. Solving by factoring will allow us to get exact answers. Now, before we get going with that, suppose we said we had two numbers multiplied together to give us 12. Well, what could those numbers be? Well, it could be like a 12 and a 1. Could be like a 6 and a 2. Could be like a 3 and a 4. Or it could be like a 4 and a 3, 2 and a 6, 1 and a 12. Could it even be a half and 24, or a 2 thirds and 18. Really, it goes on forever. There's infinitely many different possible combinations when you multiply two numbers together to get something like 12. However, what happens when you're multiplying two numbers together to get zero? Well, the only way to get zero is either if, if you take any number times zero or zero times that other number. In other words, when it's set equal to zero, you really only have two options. Either the first number is equal to zero or the second number is equal to zero. Well, if you're looking for options and you have your possibility of infinitely many choices to choose from or two I prefer the two approach so when you're solving by factoring which is when you have things multiplied together you need to make sure it's set equal to zero first so we want to get this set equal to zero first ah well we can do that by adding a 4x to both sides well, then solving by factoring. We talked about factoring in the ref chapter, the last chapter here. All you have to do is you follow your steps of factoring, which is always greatest common factor, so you can take an x out. Well, now you really have two things multiplied together to give you zero here. You have an x times the parentheses. So you could set that x equal to zero, or you could set the parentheses equal to zero. And then you want to solve each one. Well, the first one's already got x by itself. Then you to solve the blue one. All you'd have to do is subtract 4 from both sides. So this is, for the most part, the solving by factoring technique. You get 0 on one side. You do your normal factoring. Set each factor. Those are the things multiplied together equal to 0. And then you finish that. That's really all we're doing here. So here, you want to set equal to 0. So we could go ahead and take the 5x to the other side by subtracting 5x from both sides. Take the 2 to the other side by subtracting a 2 from both sides. And well, then we get our red, our blue, our green equal to 0. Now you always check for greatest common factor. There isn't one. Yes, there is one. It's one that's helpful. So there's three terms, so then you want to always check for AC factoring. You do your AC factoring. I'm not going to go through all those steps since that's a prior lesson. You do your AC factoring, you get this. You now have two things multiplied together to give you zero. You have the purple times the diarrhea color to give you zero. So you can set the purple equal to zero, set the diarrhea color equal to zero. And then you can solve each one. And the purple, you can subtract a one from both sides. Then you can go ahead and divide both sides by 3. Over here, to get x by itself, you add 2 to both sides, and you get your answers. Same idea here. You want to get x or get 0 on one side, so you'd have to add 4 to both sides. Then you'd want to check for greatest common factor, because that's always your first step in factoring. By the way, if there's two terms, then you want to check to see if it's one of your specials of differences of squares or differences of cubes or sum of cubes. If there was four terms, you just do factoring by grouping. There's three terms, so you do your AC factoring. If we do our AC factoring, we get this. You set the diarrhea color equal to zero then because you have two things multiplied together to give you zero. Then you set the red color equal to zero. You solve each one. You can subtract a one from both sides here. Here you can subtract a four from both sides. On the left one, you can divide both sides by 2. The right one, divide both sides by 3, and you get your two answers. So solving by factoring. So here, get 0 on one side. So you want to add 9 to both sides. 
and then greatest common factor. There isn't one that's helpful. Then you can do your AC factoring. A few things multiply together to give you zero. You set the first one equal to zero, set the second one equal to zero. You solve each one and you get x to be three or x to be three. In other words, instead of writing it twice, you just write it once. So pretty easy, pretty doable for most people. If you remember how to factor. Now, if you don't remember how to factor, go back to the last section and watch the videos on that. Now, here we're given the answers and you're asked to come up with the problem. In other words, this is kind of like the game show Jeopardy, where they give you the answers, you got to work backwards for the question. So basically, this whole process that we did here, you're given this and you got to work backwards up to this. That's really what we're doing. So in other words, you're given your answers and you got to work backwards. Now, keep in mind here, we are looking for integers. Now, integers don't have fractions. We have a fraction here. So you have to get rid of this fraction. So instead of dividing by three, I'm going to multiply both sides of that one by three. I don't have fractions here, so I don't have to do diddly squat over there. So now that would be like this. So now I got to set each one of these equal to zero. Well, to do that, I could add a two to both sides. Whoops, wrong thing. And here I could subtract a six from both sides. So now all we have to do is take the two things that are equal to zero. Those are the two things that multiply together to give us our stuff in our parentheses. Now, you'll notice it's asking for an equation and equal to zero. So you need to have equal to zero here. Also, we're not going to stop on this line because according to what they're looking for, they don't want it left with parentheses. They want you to multiply it up. All you have to do is just take the purple times the red, foil it out, and get your answer, and then that's it.